Good evening. Um, first, I want to start by thanking Mark for an extraordinary career. Thanking Becky for sharing Mark with us for these 13 years, and Lauren and Kristen and Nathan uh, for sharing Mark with us. As, as I think Mark shared, uh, and, and as you all well know, it's a 24-7, 365 kind of experience. Uh, as the rules have evolved, the recruiting rules have evolved. Have evolved. It's uh, you know it's really an around the clock kind of job, and uh, and it's 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 one of those jobs that's really a lifestyle. So uh, so I want to on behalf of myself personally, our athletic department at Michigan State University, thank Mark for an extraordinary career. Those of you that have heard me before, whenever I'm on a on a speaking engagement. We talk about three things. We talk about Michigan State being successful uh, on the field of play, in the classroom, and setting up our students to be successful in wherever their life's pursuit might take them. And Mark certainly has uh, achieved success in all three of those categories. And I think as his comments reflect, uh, he would prioritize them perhaps in the reverse order that I mentioned them. His priority being the success of his student athletes in their life's pursuit, which requires success in the classroom and, and picking up 114 wins along the way is, is not a bad gig. Um, today, uh, the, the hearing Mark made comments to his uh, staff and his, his team uh, was very difficult, a very bittersweet moment. But Mark's success really, for me, was captured, and I'm, uh, I, I won't name names uh, for fear of uh, embarrassing the innocent, but, uh, but captured when I walked out of the, the room and one of our key uh, academic advisors was, was, was really emotionally upset and, and crying. And I think when you can have a head football coach retire and see the impact that has on an academic advisor, that speaks to, uh, to, to the character of, of the coach and, uh, and his commitment to academics and his commitment to the success of his student athletes. And so for me, that, that really captured today in one, in one very short vignette. Um, I'm, uh, with that, I'm happy to answer questions. <coughs> so I guess what was the time that you found out about Mark's uh, announcement when he planned to retire and what has been your timeline over the maybe the last few weeks or months in terms of lining up potential successors? Well, as Mark said, it's been an evolving conversation and uh, uh, we've, we've had a number of, uh, of talks over the last uh, number of weeks and months. Um, but I think at, at some level, um, although uh, Mark's one of those people that uh, that I wish we could uh, we could find a way to clone or keep here forever. Uh, uh, with that said, because transitions are natural things in life, we've uh, you know, we've been planning uh, for for the various uh, permutations and the various options for some time, and uh, and have a process in place uh, uh, by which we'll uh, we'll expeditiously uh, find a successor. Bill, two quick ones. Do you have a time frame when you want to name the next one? <clears throat> and at Michigan State, the Board of Trustees actually hires the coach. Have you discussed with them? I mean, are they going to be more actively involved? Is it going to be you bringing them who your selection? Can you get into that, please? Well, in terms of the time frame, I'd say we're, we're going to move as quickly as, as we possibly can. And uh, beyond that, it's hard to give you a specific uh, time frame. Uh, you're correct. Uh, uh, a question I can adroitly answer as a former board secretary, uh, the board of trustees does uh, a per board policy vote on the, uh, the, the head coach, uh, among a number of other roles. Um, so uh, I will be having conversations with the board. Um, I've already uh, talked to Chairperson Byram, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll have further conversations with the board in, in the coming days. Bill, I was curious, if, would, is, is this timing for you, would you kind of categorize this as a difficult timing this point in February to go now find a head coach. And will you take any of Mark's input uh, or thoughts on potential replacements or what direction to go? Well, I'll answer the second question first. Uh, um, you know, 
as as part of the uh, you know when you're sort of sitting uh, together with uh, with your head coach and going through those sort of well you know what if this what if that suppose this suppose that kinds of conversations that I think you know people have um, we've we've already had uh, a number of conversations where he's provided his perspective uh, I thought he very uh, very thoughtfully articulated uh, a set of criteria. Uh, in, in one of his last questions up here before me, um, so uh, so so yes, I'd uh, uh, consider Mark's input thoughtfully. And your first question, just the timing of being early. Oh February. yes, I'm sorry. Yes, um, you know I I don't I don't know that there's ever a good time. There are times that are better than other times, um, but I think that. Uh, that when you've won 114 games and you're our all-time winningest coach and, and you've taken us to the places Mark's taken us, you've set the bar where Mark set it, that, uh, that I was comfortable operating on his timeline, whatever that would be, and I think uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find a very good coach. Let's go Steven and Nick and Justin and Graham. Bill, same question I guess I had asked Mark. You know, what do you sort of see as the desirable traits or qualities in a coach to be successful here and um, I guess the second part is Mike Tressel being in the interim would he have an opportunity to earn that job or could you even see a scenario where he coaches out the 2020 season as the interim or do you want to is it your total preference to have a new permanent coach by game one so in terms of your uh, in terms of your first question on, on characteristics I, as I said I think Mark articulated those pretty thoughtfully um, I uh, a while ago, uh, several years ago, had a conversation with uh, with Tyrone Willingham, and uh, we were sitting uh, watching a game, and and I turned to him and said, "Well, Coach, uh, you know, when you recruit players, what what do you look for? What are you know, just making small talk with with Coach Willingham?" And he turned to me with a smile and he said, "Really, only one thing, and, and the number two is a distant second, and the number one thing is character." And so I think that, uh, you know, to me that was a, a wise lesson uh, from him. Uh, I think that as Mark articulated, uh, I think Michigan State has been most successful when it's looked at somebody that uh, knows the territory. There's an old, uh, the old, old, uh, old, old line from the first song in the, in the Music Man, you got to know the territory. And, uh, and I think that's true in a lot of things in life, you got to know the territory. And so I think that's important. Um, you know, as I said, someone with, uh, with character and integrity, uh, optimally someone that knows the Big Ten, uh, somebody that knows and understands Michigan State and our culture, I think fits very important. Doesn't mean it has to be an alum, uh, doesn't, you know, but, but, but somebody that gets the flavor of who we are as an institution is important. Um, in terms of uh, uh, Mike, uh, I think the world of Mike. Um, I think he'll he'll he stepped in uh, as the acting person, uh, for which we're very grateful, and I think he'll do a tremendous job uh, in that role. Um, in terms of uh, who's on our list, internal, external, all of that, uh, uh, we'll we'll keep to ourselves for the moment. Well, I know you said uh, that you wanted to let Mark kind of dictate his timeline, but for you, as someone who's not been at this job that long. How long have you been actively preparing for a moment like this, this situation? Because it is something for you. It's new. You have for you. Well, uh, you know, February, uh, uh, February 4th or 5th, I'm not going to get the time exactly right, uh, of 2018, I, uh, it was a Sunday, I walked into Cole's house uh, with a to-do list for the incoming acting president, uh, John Angler, and uh, uh, the number one thing on my list was that we needed to find an, an acting athletic director. And uh, uh, to my sort of complete surprise, John asked me to step into that role. And uh, so today is, I think, the, uh, the last day of my second year uh, as athletic director. And, uh, and I think at some level we've been, you know, we've been preparing for this for two years. And I don't, I don't sort of mean that in a coy way, but... Uh, but as, as, I've, as I've said all along, uh, you know, Mark and, and is a person we'd want to we'd want to keep as long as we can keep him. I think he's obviously done a tremendous job. But uh, but over the months, you think about uh, you know, we've uh, 
in, in my two years, we've only uh, we've only had one coaching search uh, for a rowing coach, and I, I challenge most of you to name the rowing coach. Um, but uh, but I think you know, in all of our, all of our 19 head coaches, uh, you never know what's going to happen. You know, the sort of proverbial, you hope nobody gets hit by a bus walking out of the game tonight, but you just never know. And so that's an ongoing process that. Uh, that we talk about with a, with a few of my key senior staff on a regular basis and you're constantly sort of scanning the horizon and thinking what you do and certainly in the in the last number of weeks as uh, conversations with Mark have uh, have begun to to think about this as a possibility uh, we've gotten more more into the weeds but uh, but no I think it's something that if you if you're doing your job, you've always got in the back of your mind, and you've you've always got some flavor of a of a list or a set of ideas, or at the very least, a set of criteria. Just to quickly follow up on that: it, will, it, will it be an in-house search, or will you guys bring in some sort of help from a committee or a search firm or anything like that that you can share? Well, we've got an in-house group, and the the, the degree to which we'll, we're we're going to use a search firm, we're, uh, we'll we'll figure out shortly. And then secondarily, uh, since this is, besides the rowing coach uh, hire, uh, this is a big hire for you. This is an opportunity for you to really put a stamp on your time as athletic director at Michigan State. How serious do you take that? How much do you kind of feel the fan base right now wanting to see this program return to where it was just a few years ago? Well, I think there's sort of a, a, a two-part answer to that question, and it's sort of a a dichotomy of parts that uh, um, there, there's a there's an old uh, a, an F. Scott Fitzgerald quote from uh, from the crack up that uh, uh, that, that uh, you know, talking about having two opposing ideas in your mind at the same time and still having the ability to function and uh, you know I think from my perspective in this role on the one hand. I haven't been going to MSU football games for 50 years, but it's pretty close. And uh, uh, and I remember having uh, you know, tears streaming down my face at that Indiana game in 87, uh, probably the most special game I've ever been to because it meant we were going to the Rose Bowl. Something that, uh, you know, as a young kid, I wasn't, you know, we had some rocky years. I wasn't sure it was ever going to happen in my lifetime. And, uh, and we've had ups and downs, and uh, so I, I understand very deeply how important this is to the Spartan community, uh, to our now 550,000 plus living alumni, uh, to our former players who built this tradition, um, and, and, uh, and to the other, the other 24 sports who rely on the revenue generated from this program. So on the one hand, uh, I think one could feel the you know the absolute weight of the earth upon them with a critical decision like this. On the other hand, I think you have to do your job and uh, find the best person. And there's a process, and we've got good people, and we've been working this, and we're ready for it. And so we'll work the process. And I'm confident that working the process with our values and uh, it will, will lead us to the right person and point us in the right direction, and I think we'll find an excellent coach. And so, you know, on the one hand, I think you have to you have to acknowledge and feel the the, the weight of how important this is. Um, and on the other hand, I don't think you can let that crush you. You have to you have to come in and uh, take your coat off every morning and uh, and do your job, and and we'll do that. One final one here with Graham. I know that you've got a relatively new president at the school, and I'm wondering how much he has talked about wanting to be involved with this, and how much input you expect in that internal circle, and will a guy like Tom Izzo be in that circle? Like that group that's doing this search, who is it uh, of names you can share, I guess? Well, I would say, uh, first, I've been in regular contact with President Stanley, and uh, and he'll be, uh, you know, we'll, we'll update him regularly, you know, obviously, as a you know, extraordinary schedule as president, and and won't be part of a, a search committee per se, but uh, but but we'll regularly update President Stanley, and uh, and he'll be you know, an important voice in in, in that conversation. Um, I think I'll uh, you know we'll, we've we've taken a, a 
page out of the uh, the playbook from the, from the last search, which I think was by any measure successful. And uh, uh, the two of the individuals on that search will will help us uh, again. Um, obviously, Alan Haller was a, was an important member of that search, and as one of our two deputy athletic directors, as a former uh, college athlete and professional athlete in our football program, uh, will be an important part of that search. Um, Coach Izzo was a part of that search last time. Uh, obviously, uh, yeah. he tips off shortly. Uh, he's in mid-season, so uh, having him as an, as an active member of the search in the way that he was last time will probably be challenging, but, uh, but I think uh, uh, you know, Coach Izzo is an important voice in, in, our, in our department and will be an important voice in this process. And, uh, and beyond that, we'll have, uh, we'll have a few other folks help us, but it'll be a, it'll, it'll be a, a, a t tight, quick process. So can you share anything about Mark's new role and what he might be doing? Sure. Um, I think uh, those of you familiar with Mark's contract, there was a provision in his contract, uh, as there is in, in Coach Izzo's, that uh, uh, under certain circumstances upon their retirement from coaching, they'd uh, have the opportunity, if they wish, to fulfill what, what I might sort of generally refer to as an ambassador role. Um, Mark and I have had a number of conversations, and uh, I can't say that we have uh, uh, sort of finalized uh, what, what exactly all of that means, and, uh, and I think he wants a, a bit of a reduced schedule, uh, which I certainly understand. But I think Mark can be extraordinarily valuable to the department in a variety of ways. Um, he, he'll help us with, uh, with alumni and donor engagement. We've got a number of, uh, of building projects that we'll be considering over the, the next while, and uh, uh, he can help us uh, prepare for those and, and fundraise for those. Um, we've talked a little bit about maybe teaching a class, uh, taking some of his lessons of leadership and, and, and expanding those beyond our, our student athletes to to perhaps a class that involves uh, undergraduates at the university outside of athletics. Um, so I, I think there are, uh, and, and then I think there's just uh, general wisdom that he's had from a, a long career in athletics that can benefit our department. So uh, I don't know that we've, we've totally nailed it down, um, but, uh, but those kinds of things are, are what I see Mark doing um, in, uh, in a new role. And I think he's, uh, he's very interested, as he said, in uh, and staying active with with student athletes, and uh, obviously he'll respect the, uh, uh, the, the give space to, to the new new coaches appropriate when he hands that baton over. But um, uh, but I think he'll he's he wants to be actively engaged in, in the life of our department, the university, and we're very excited that he is. You mentioned Mark's contract; he was due uh, like four point two or three million dollar. Retention bonus last month. Did he get that in full? Did that happen as it was illustrated in the contract, or did anything change? Yes, I, I I can't tell you whether technically a check has been cut, but per the terms of the contract, he'll receive that bonus. Yes. Bill, Pat, he, <clears throat> there are public documents alleging that there were recruiting violations that occurred under Mark Antonio's tenure. I'm wondering if the university is aware of it, and if you guys have addressed that or spoken with the NCA at all. The well, the university is aware of it. Uh, uh, to the best of our knowledge, as, as, as I understand the allegations, they're patently false. Uh, we'll be happy to defend that in the court of law. Um, insofar as there are you know, ongoing legal issues, I'm not sure there's a whole lot more I can say. Um, but, but that does give me the opportunity to, uh, in, a, uh, you know, in a generic way, to say that uh, you know, in the first year that I was athletic director, um, there were a number of allegations raised uh, uh, involving involving Mark and uh, and Tom as well, and uh, I made a point at every public event that I spoke at for an entire year that if ever I mentioned Mark or Tom's name, I used the word integrity, and I did that very intentionally, and uh, I stopped doing it, I guess, because. You just can't do the same thing all the time, but uh, uh, but perhaps it's a good opportunity to uh, uh, to, to say that, that from my perspective, uh, um, 
Mark and Tom are two people that uh, uh, are just of extraordinary integrity, and uh, uh, and I think that uh, that will bear itself out. Thanks, guys.